okay so guys uh yesterday we had learned about uh, okay what is our primary responsibility and what uh, what is the expectation of our stakeholders from our end and uh, how can we contribute towards uh, the uh, the growth of the company so that the shareholders wealth is maximized okay now those all are the text uh, or we can say the written bit of the portion and all okay but actually to make those decisions uh the the responsibility that we have okay is cannot be a decision just randomly okay this project looks good okay let me do this project or this project is uh, good for me the real estate is booming let me do it no right do you do you take a decision just based on things because you are like and you are motivated or do you do some analysis around it before you want to start something have to do an analysis with due diligence uh you do a due diligence like let's say tomorrow if someone also tells you okay this stock is good and please buy because in future it's going to go up do you just don't believe that person and buy it right you actually read something background maybe a little bit a small article or maybe a small view or a third person opinion you take on that stock right before buying that stock so that you you know for sure that okay this this is actually a profit making stock and all right you just go don't do something because you like it okay similarly uh, guys this investment appraisal that we going to do today is uh, more or less those who have done f9 will find it uh, a small recap of what we have done in past uh, bear in mind this recap is very important because uh, this small things will play an important role when you go to the advanced calculations of it okay now investment appraisals me guys we going to learn uh, if i am making a particular investment forget it if i want to make it the first thing that you going to learn in this investment appraisal is whether or not you should make an investment in that particular project or that particular investment you should do it or not do it okay see because the very first decision we we need to take is whether whether this project is profitable or not profitable if it is profitable i will do the project but if it is not profitable i i will not do the project okay now guys uh, tell me one thing let's say if the project is not profitable for a company do you think the company may go for that project no 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 sure what about others what's your opinion ananya arjan no no okay no i no. would say it depends okay now why see you remember yesterday we were talking okay end of the day whatever investments or that company needs to do it all depends on the risk capital of the company okay now when i am saying it depends because see there are some areas in the world or let's say some investment that company needs to do which is of a strategical uh which is of a strategic of a nature okay let's say setting up a store in a prime location now that prime location the rent and such is so high that that project becomes non profitable for you okay but your presence is required in that market to be strategically fit and you need to be for marketing and all other purposes right so just because having a store in that location you have the brand awareness and there is a Uh, your other sales and all is getting impacted okay so that's the reason that sometimes the company may go with the loss making project because that is of a strategical benefit in nature okay so that's why whenever i make a decision i always uh, tend to be neutral saying okay if it is positive go ahead if it not positive do not go ahead but however it will all depends on the appetite uh, the risk appetite of the management and the guys who want to take that decision okay because see your investments are not always based on numbers okay your investments are based on the future potential of that particular investment okay today it may not be profitable but tomorrow i'll give a classic example of yes bank yes bank went into restructuring and all okay do you think the yes bank is profitable in short term today what's your opinion on this guys not yet it's not yet profitable it's not yet profitable right but look at this strategically 
Yes Bank now has support of the top three banks in India. That is SBI. They have backup of HDFC. They have small of, of uh, Access Bank and everyone. Okay. We all know since there is a support of these banks, tomorrow the Yes Bank is not going to go bankrupt. So there is a future potential for this bank. So hence, people, what they are doing is now started accumulating Yes Bank stock. Now, typically assuming that in future, if this stock goes up, it's going to be a very, it, it's going to have a high potential. Okay. So it's whenever you're making a decision, it's not only the financial factors. Okay. It's something of non-financial factors also that you consider who are the partners how uh, what is the who's the ceo of the company how what is his vision how is the company's growth going up okay so all those factors need to be considered now in this investment appraisals we're going to learn various techniques through which we can identify whether a particular project is a profitable project or a not profitable project okay now from exam standpoint of view we will go by the basic logics of this okay now till F7, you are going to go profitable, go ahead, not profitable, do not go ahead, okay. But from P4 perspective, also you need to keep in mind the other non-financial factors like strategic. Always have uh, the back of your mind because all your investments will revolve around strategic, financial, regulate, regulatory, environmental and ethical issues, okay. Even if you fulfill one, that is financial, and if you do not fulfill the other parts, it's of no use to you. Okay, you never know when your project may come for a standstill and all. Okay, everyone with me, Dilia? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the first thing is something called as free cash flow. So, anyone aware of the free cash flows? What is it and all about? Guys, anyone? Uh, the cash flows that are available to the company after uh, considering its uh, business operation and its main uh, capital expenditures for the survival of the business. After that, the money that is left to be distributed to all the uh, stakeholders, uh, maybe that can be considered as free cash flows. Yes, you are right on that, Yurta. So guys, uh, free cash flow is typically nothing, but uh, we can say after receiving all your cash income and after paying all your cash uh, expenses what is the money left with you okay now guys uh, your pnl your profit and loss statement may be uh, your pnl may you are making either profit or a loss okay but uh, that's not the actual scenario of the company okay for the company to survive at the end of the day always remember cash is king you want to make real cash. You don't want to just make profits on paper. You want to make real cash. Okay. Because see, in life, you may come across a lot of companies which are highly profitable. Okay. The PNL and all, they are making huge profits and all. Okay. But then you realize the company is cash flow negative. That means that company is not able to generate enough cash for their survival. Okay. Even see, Today, I may have, uh, let's say, a lot of real estate around or you may have a lot of assets with you, okay? But if you don't have the money to pay the maintenance of that asset, is that asset of any use to you? No. No, right? It's as good as a dead investment that you have, right? Because you cannot, let's say you have a car, but if you do not maintain it, if you do not have a proper service and all done, you won't be able to use the car, right? So even if you own a car worth 10 lakh rupees and if you don't have an actual cash for the maintenance and day-to-day -day commute of the car or petrol or diesel, that car is of no use to you, right? Similarly, end of the day, the free cash flows typically means uh, what is the money left with the company at the end of the day in terms of real cash profit, okay? So that's what free cash flow is all about. Now, why we say free cash flows is because see, when you're making an investment, Okay, unlike your F7 and your uh, statutory reporting, your financials and all, okay, where you have profit numbers. If you're making 100 rupees profit, that whole 100 rupees is not a cash profit. Agrees to that, everyone? If I'm making 100 rupees profit and showing it in my PNL, is that whole 100 rupees my actual cash profit? No. No. 
No. No, right. It includes depreciation. It includes uh, deferred income and all those aspects, right? Those are my non-cash item, right? So typically, end of the day, is a company is looking for free cash flows. That's why we make a cash flow statement, right? To understand what is the actual cash coming in for the company and what is the actual cash going out for the company. Now, why? Because the end of the day, we need to know. If if I'm getting my pocket money, I need to know. Okay, if I, if I get hundred rupees and I'm spending ten rupees, I'm left with ninety rupees. Now, what I can invest or what I can do is I can invest that ninety rupees. If I'm getting pocket money as hundred rupees, I cannot invest whole hundred rupees because there are certain expenses that needs to be done, right? So, <coughs> first thing is you will need that money for information of uh, what is the actual cash available with you. To make the following decisions, one is investment appraisal. Because investment appraisal is nothing but typically saying, "कहाँ पे पैसे डाल रहे हैं? Where should I invest the money? Should is it real estate? Is it stocks? Is it mutual funds? Or uh, is it any other startup business? Is it a venture capitalist thing? Where do you want to invest the funds for? Okay, so that's what it may. That's what it means when we are talking about investment appraisal. <coughs> Second thing is business valuation. Now, let's say uh, we know all these startup, right? Ola, Flipkart, and all. Are they making profits? No. No. Right. All these startups are not making profit, right? Let's say, how is it possible that a loss-making company has a billion-dollar valuation? How is it justified? Yes, Anjana. Guys, how is a loss-making company having a billion-dollar valuation justified? Because of the future use they expect, future use of that service or the asset which they expect, the investor expects. Ah, uh, not really. We can say future. Uh, it's you are partially right. I would say, Sandeep. uh you are on the point but i think the way we you articulated it we could do it little bit differently i so would rather idea, say dear yeah, fala so, so the idea is uh, in the initial years you acquire the market and as and when the customer gets used to your service or product uh you start cutting down on the discounts that you are uh, giving in the present and eventually you earn or you recover uh, the losses of the initial years and then you are profitable uh okay again partially right everyone has done costing yeah guys yes. everyone malaika mansi arjan everyone devansh everyone has understood costing right yes sir do you know something known as a margin of safety and all that in the pricing chapter yeah 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 okay for a company be, to be profitable what does it needs to maximize when can a company be profitable yes yes guys when can a company be profitable after it crosses its break even mm okay okay i would say uh, for a company be to be profitable the company needs to maximize its contribution right do you guys agree to that yes sir yes sir yes right contribution everyone knows you know gross margin okay see guys what typically happens is every company has a fixed cost okay you may be making money in terms of gross margin or you can say in terms of contribution because see no company is doing a loss making business okay you sell a product for 100 rupees your costing is 80 rupees you make 20 rupees as gross margin but your overhead costs costs are so high that you are making a loss in the initial years now for me to cross overcome those things i need to concentrate on my top line right all this business valuation the startups and all work on the top line okay when i say top line it means your revenue should keep on growing okay 
people are not going to look at okay what is your losses let's say you made loss from 100 to 200 to 200 to 300 to 400 okay but you need to understand okay I, it's fine if i make a loss at initial stage okay not not throughout the life of the startup okay guys uh, at initial stage you make a loss it's fine okay but let's say if you are making a loss then subsequently your revenue also should increase to that extent okay because what does that show okay since the company is growing it's making investments and that's why the company is making a loss in the initial stage okay but let's say if my revenue does not grow and if my loss keeps on growing then that means my business itself is not not profitable and i need to restructure my business model everyone agrees to that Yes. Any doubts on this, guys? Any doubts? No. No. Okay. Now, this is how do we do? So typically, when the when how a business valuation works is all this loss making companies and all how they make money is basically we look at their top line. Okay. How much is their actual cash revenue growing by month on month or year on year? How much is the revenue growing by? and accordingly we value the business and we come to a fair market valuation okay based on the future potential growth of the company third thing is the performance measure measurement and management i already spoke on that okay <coughs> that if your losses are increasing but if the revenue does not increase that means the company is not doing good third thing is the dividends uh, policy formulation uh free cash flows are used in dividend formulation is as simple as that i need to know kitna paisa mere jeb mein rahega i need to know right because see, if my pnl is showing 100 rupees i need to know that i have actual 100 rupees cash in my pocket to pay my shareholders because see dividend may not be an income or an expense but when it comes to allocation of money the money should go from company's account to the shareholders account it's an actual transfer of cash so the company should have enough liquidity available with them okay everyone with me till now yes sir yes sir okay now free cash flow is generally calculated using incremental cash flow approach okay what do you mean by that okay like we said we want our revenues to grow on a month year on year basis okay so obviously whatever we study in investment appraisal guys is all about the future thing right because you you are here to make a decision whether you want to do that business or don't want to do that business okay now any business do you think it will make a steady revenue or will it keep on growing or will it aspire for growing on a year on year basis what do you think guys will the is the company planning to grow uh, Guys, just hold on a second. There's one student who has an issue. Yeah. Now, guys, all the companies want to grow, right? On a month-on-month -month basis, the company uh, wants to grow and all. Okay. So similarly, when you're projecting something or when you say, okay, I'm gonna make a revenue, even if it's a rental business, which has steady revenue, but in, even in the rental business, you guys need to understand that rent also keeps on growing every year by ten percent, right? even the rent is not stagnant right so whenever we use these approaches and all we will ensure that we use a incremental cash flow approach okay where year on year basis we going to analyze what is the actual cash coming in and what is the actual cash going out and accordingly we'll do our calculations okay now an alternative approach is something called as adjusted accounting profit uh have you do you have you guys do you guys know how do you prepare your cash flow statement yeah guys how do you prepare your cash statement of cash flow yes rachel uh, we start with profit before tax then we deduct the um uh we actually add uh, the uh, all uh, we the depreciation is added in the loss that we uh, incurred in um, when we sell the asset that is added and then we deduct all the, the uh, profits that we get and by selling an asset um then the increase or decrease in receivables and payable is added and deducted 
uh, then we come to an operating profit then uh, we can calculate the investing uh, uh, profit from investing activities that is uh, when we purchase we add that we less it from that uh, uh, profit before tax and then if we sell any asset the pro uh, the cash that we get we add that back and um, in financing activities we take all the dividends and the investments okay. that we uh, why do you add back the depreciation uh, non cash expenditure non cash it's a non cash expense right so guys this free cash flows and all this our existed accounting profit is nothing but your statement of cash flows end of the day your income and expenses come to your actual cash item okay so if you read the last point it says uh, where we begin with cash flow add back all uh, non cash items make the necessary adjustment to get the free cash flows okay including deduction for any incremental investment repayments of debt okay your investment repayment of debt and all parts for, um, uh, forms for, so repayment of debt forms part of your uh, financing activities in the cash flow investment forms part of your investing activities in the cash flow right yes or no guys yes sir yes sir right so that's how we call it as adjusted accounting profit but adjusted accounting profit is nothing but a similar thing to your statement of cash flows everyone clear on the free cash flows and all and what are the assumptions and all guys we are going in detail and we are going into discussion to understand okay what are the characteristics of each and every model because see AFM is all about financial models and all that you have in place and each and all every model unlike uh, the past numbers and all it is based on future forecast so whenever you forecast something or whenever you try to predict future it is all based on assumptions and all those things right you cannot go and guarantee and say 100% that tomorrow this stock price is going to go up by 10% no we cannot say that we don't know but to the best of our estimate we are trying to say okay this will go up okay now let's look into few of the characteristics of these things so first thing is known as relevant cash flows uh what do you mean by relevant cash flows can uh, so guys this is bit of a revision i want everyone to participate uh, what do you mean by relevant cash flows only Uh, project specific uh, cash flows like related to only that particular project right uh, so guys relevant cash flows typically uh, means uh, let's say i'm starting two business one is the sneaker business and one is the socks business okay i cannot uh, attribute the cost of my raw material the logistic cost to procure my socks ka raw material i cannot include it in my shoes business right that's not relevant for this factory though both the companies are owned by me it does not make sense so we only take the relevant cash flows okay now only incremental cash flows of the project relating to the future are to be included those cash flows that are affected or can purely change the decision what do you mean by this guys now a uh, simple thing before starting any business you do research and development yes, yes. or no yes sir okay. yes sir now let's say uh, when you are trying to do your financial analysis of that business is your research and development cost a relevant cost or not a relevant cost uh, not a relevant cost not because relevant. it is already incurred right guys any cost that is already incurred or does not change the decision that you going to take right see what is a relevant cash flow that if this cost comes in i may take a project or i may not take a project right because that's an income and an expense that will change my decision but r and d is something that is already done if i start a business or if i don't start a business my money is gone so that's not a relevant cash flow for me okay what are irrelevant cash flows is like we'll look into sunk cost sunk cost can you give me an example of sunk cost it is nothing but a historic cost which is already incurred 
an example of nature of such cost sai uh as already stated research and development will be yes. one yes guys research and development is one of the sunk cost because those cost are already gone okay interest cost why why do you think uh, we don't take the interest cost as an irrelevant cash flow any idea guys and we discount it to present value so interest is taken care of there right see guys interest is an actual cash inflow and outflow to me okay but typically what happens is uh, we all know the concept of time value of money okay so we use something called as discounting factor to factor in that interest component that is that better opportunity cost okay that's why we do not include it as we move forward you'll understand why we do not include the interest cost now in the whole syllabus keep one thing in mind no where interest is going to be an actual cost to you okay be it business valuations uh, be it your uh, investment appraisals interest will no, never form part of your valuation but it will form part of your cost okay whenever we try to look into the cost perspective it's an actual cost but whenever you look from cash perspective the the model is defined in such a way that interest cost gets indirectly factored in okay everyone with me till here dividend payments why dividend payments why why dividend payment is irrelevant Yes, guys. Why is dividend payment irrelevant? Arjun, Bianca, Shailin, can you hear me, guys? Yeah, but I don't know. It's as simple as that. Why are you doing all these calculations, guys? Just try to understand. Because it forms a part of a cash reserve already present with you. Yes, the end cash that is gonna be left with you is nothing but the cash that you can give it to the shareholders, right? You remember the free cash flow will help me make in dividend policy formulation. If I am a cash positive company, then only I'll be able to pay the dividends, right? And even if I am a cash positive company, this is not an income and expense for me. It's just allocation of money to the shareholders, right? Hence, it is not a cost to the company while doing the free cash flow analysis. then comes your other non cash items and apportioned or existing fixed cost okay now so guys uh, these are few of the investment appraisal methods uh, so we'll uh, don't worry we'll be going into detail on each of them that is first one is known as npv then we have irr then we have mirr we have discounted payback we have macaulay duration and everything okay now we will be going into each of them in detail one by one as we move forward okay now first thing have you guys heard about the npv yes sir is there anyone who has not done f9 or something guys anyone who has not done f9 can you please let me know we did not i did not do it Uh, uh, but you actually, are a chartered accountant. Yeah, I am a chartered accountant, so I know that. Yes, so so you will be aware of it. Anyone, uh, right? Because see, guys, either either you must have studied in your F nine, or either if you are a chartered accountant, either ways you must have learned about NPV because this is one of the critical points. Okay, NPV is nothing but the way to calculate the free cash flows and arrive to whether the pro project is making money or no. Okay. a typical npv is uh, based on uh, let's say if you're putting in 100 rupees are you making money more than 100 rupees or are you making money less than 100 rupees is we try to evaluate okay the first step is typically there is three step approach first we calculate the free cash flows then we discount the free cash flows and then we compare it with our uh, investment to say whether the project is profitable or not profitable If NPV is positive, we will go ahead with the project. If NPV is not positive, we will not go ahead with the project. Okay. Now, while doing all these NPVs and uh, all this stuff, okay, 
the first thing we need to is very important is to understand this thing okay that is nothing but discounting of cost of capital now this cost of capital is very important there is a separate chapter in that but first we need to learn about the time value of money okay now does anyone know about time value of money anyone who yes, wants sir. to elaborate yes. yeah can can someone help me understand what do you mean by time value of money with an example yes guys no one knows about time value of money learned in f9 right Neel? sir uh, can i uh, so in that yeah. uh, time value of money is like uh, so uh, i can buy some books uh, for 100 uh, three books for 100 rupees right now and after a certain period of time uh, the uh, i can Uh, with the same hundred rupees, I can buy only one book. So the value of money decreases or diminishes. So that's time value of money. Right. So guys, a uh, time value of money typically means value of one rupee today is not gonna be one rupee in future. Right. It's gonna be less than one rupee. Okay. As simple as that. Uh, earlier, you know, used to buy a bottle of Coke, the small Coke, the glass bottle. It used to cost you ten bucks. now now it cost you around 15 bucks right so typically why see the price of the bottle has not typically gone up this is the impact of inflation and all other aspects right because inflation brings down the value of money okay the value of money today is not the same as value of money in uh, let's say in future why because see it's all about the opportunity cost okay if i invest my money see typically if you keep your money idle okay the value of your money will depreciate right why do you think people make investments and all right because see let's say if you have 100 rupees in your bank account today after 5 years do you think that value of 100 rupees is 100 or will or has it come down it has come down it has come down right that 100 rupees may the number or the quantity of product like neel said okay i i will not be able to go and buy the same quantity of product right but if that 100 rupees if i would have invested somewhere the value of that 100 rupees would be 150 today which then again i can buy uh, the three books at the same price right typically i paid only 100 rupees for it right because 50 rupees has come through my investment activities so guys time value of money is nothing but the rate at which your money depreciates now this is only to the extent of the interest rate okay if i invest my money in the banks and all what is the returns i make on my investment okay now three things to learn over here one is something known as present value one is the future value okay present value means value of money today and future value means what is the value of money going to be in future after one year two year three year or 10 years okay now let's say if i am making 10000 rupees in the next 3 years in the third year do you think that value of 10000 is same today or will it be more or less it will be less less it will be less yes it would be less because let's say if today i have 9000 then in future it's going to be 13000 right that's the future value i was talking about but today that value of money is going to be lower than that okay now how do we calculate it future value uh, present value is nothing but future value divided by 1 plus r raised to n now 1 plus r 1 divided by 1 plus r raised to n is nothing but the discount factor everyone is aware of this discount factor yes anyone yes, is not aware yes. now guys you can calculate it manually by one do it, doing it by 1 divided by 1 plus r and all but i suggest these can numbers are already given to you behind so in the exam we do not waste time in calculations okay we'll just directly pick up the numbers from here now can you, can you guys try this example by yourself this is just basic questions we have guys just try it by yourself
Anyone got the answer? Thousand. Yeah. Okay. Can you give me the breakup? Um. So, ten percent. Can you show me the question? Yeah. So, ten percent raised to minus three into one three three one. Okay. I'll just go with the formula. What is the future value given to me as one three three one? Yeah. Multiply by one. Multiply by okay. Guys, I'm just putting the formula for you guys. I'll explain you why. One plus what is the rate of interest given to me as ten percent? And raised to how many years am I talking about? Three. Three. I'm talking about three years. Thousand rupees. Okay. Yes. Sir. Now, alternate way to do it is future value multiplied by the discount factor. That is nothing but one three three one multiplied by what is the discount factor? Zero. At ten percent for three years. Zero point seven five one. Where did you get this from? The present value, the ten percent for three years, zero point seven five one. This is the value. Can everyone see this? Yes. Yes. Guys, that is gonna be zero point seven five one. Your answer will slightly differ because uh, in Excel, guys, what happens is typically you just round it off. Excel takes it to the absolute numbers. <laughs> Clear, everyone. Any doubts till here, guys? Everyone with me till here? Yes, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everyone clear, right? Because see, guys, this may seem basic right now, but it is very important uh, that you understand this concept because when you are doing that investment appraisal and NPV analysis, you may sometimes struggle with what methods to use. So this is very important. Let's just save the document. Okay. The next one is annuity. What do you mean by annuity, guys? Any idea? Every year we get the same cash flow, and we need to discount it with a single cumulative discounting factors. Like for ten for three years, we need to add like zero point seven five one, and the for other two years, and we multiply by one three three one, we will get a single single amount for that. Okay. For every recurring cash flow. So annuity is basically know. your EMI. Uh, yes, that's your EMI. Let's say in a normal situation, a business will grow. It will make hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, right? So I'll individually go and discount, right? I'll discount by one. I'll discount it by two. I'll discount it by three. I'll discount it by four. Okay. But let's say when you have the recurring cash flows, what do I mean by recurring cash flows? Is let's say my average is coming to two fifty. ठीक है. Do you think I'll still go and discount individual of them? No, sir. No. No, right? Why? See, I can. There is no wrong in that. Okay, guys. Whenever you want to do it, there is nothing right or wrong in that. Okay. From an exam standpoint, also you can do it. There is no wrong in that. But just to save our time, what we do is, instead of following all these processes and all, we can just directly multiply this number. With the annuity factor, okay. Now, just to show you, can you guys do a calculation for me? Can you do zero point nine zero zero nine plus one point seven three six? How much is it coming to? Two point six four five. Zero point zero point nine zero nine plus. One point seven three six. One point seven three six. Two point six four five. 
Oh, sorry. This is uh, no, the table factor, yeah. right. Uh, I'll have to look at zero point eight two six. Okay, it is coming to one point seven three five, guys. That is one year, two year ka present value table. Everyone with me till here? Yes, sir. Okay, but if I go to annuity table, you you see, I get the direct number of one point seven three six. That is nothing but my final answer, right? This one, guys. So I have two option, guys. As simple as that. Let's do it. So I'll do it for only for two years, guys. For now, and I'll show you. Discount factor is zero point nine zero nine and zero point eight two six. Okay, so the present value is nothing but this multiplied by this, and your NPV will be nothing but a total of this two. Everyone with me till here? Now, using annuity, how will we use annuity? We'll use the future value multiplied by the annuity factor. My future value is how much? I am, for example, I have taken two fifty, and my annuity factor is this. Am I getting the same answer in both the instance, guys? Can you see this? Am I getting the same answer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this is how or typically what is meant by annuity. But if in the exam you are confused, you can use the present value approach itself to get your annuity answers. Okay. Let's go on to the next page. Okay, that is constant cash flow multiplied by the annuity factor. Can you do this example? Uh, present value is not. Yeah. Yes, guys. What is the answer for this example? Anyone? What is the annuity factor? Discount factor is ten percent. Three thousand seven ninety. So uh, it is thousand multiplied by how much? Um, so I use the formula instead of the annuity table. I don't have the annuity table. Three point seven nine zero. Don't you have the access to the notes, Bianca? Um, no. Oh, why, why, why don't you have the access to the notes? Uh, using the laptop for the Zoom call, so I can't access the notes right now. Okay, no problem. You can download it now, still, and you can have it in the screen sharing. No worries. Uh, you... So, guys, uh, the annuity, annuity factor... factor is three point seven nine one. It is ten percent, right? Discount factor. Yeah. For five years, this is the fifth year. The ten percent is three point seven nine one. Three point seven nine one. So your answer is three thousand seven hundred and ninety-one. Play everyone. Just one thing: calculate the present value of one thousand. Right. Present value of one thousand. Now, can you do the next part by yourself? <coughs> uh, I got everyone understood this part, guys. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. Can you do the next one? Uh, Be I careful got... with what is written. Yes, sir. I got three one three two point eight eight. Three one three two point eight eight. Okay, we'll solve it. 
Now, guys. Now, guys, remember one thing: all the cash flows that we are doing is as at year end. Okay, these cash flows are not at the start of the year. If I am saying I am business is gonna make hundred rupees, that means by the end of the year, the business is gonna make hundred rupees. Okay. Now, and all the years given to you over here are not the calendar years; it's the number of years. That means it does not mean twenty nineteen, twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two, like three years. No. it means year 1 year 2 and year 3 now it can be any 3 years okay now can someone read out the question for me calculate the present value of 1000 dollars to be received for 5 years starting from end of year 3 at a discount rate of 10% per annum okay so i'll just i'll just plot in the normal thing okay so we have year 0 guys year 0 is nothing that does not mean anything year 0 is usually a year of investment because first year when you go and set up your business you make an investment once your business gets going running you start getting your cash flows okay question says 1000 rupees i am going to receive for 5 years that means 5 times i am going to receive 1000 rupees but that 1000 rupees is not going to come from immediately first year it's going to come from the end of year 3 from the third year i am going to get this money for 5 years everyone with me till here we have inputted yes. 1000 sorry everyone with me till here yes sir yes sir what is this thing known as this is something called as delayed annuity guys this delayed annuity typically stands when you don't get your money from first year onwards right not all the business and factories can be set up in the first year yes or no yes right there are maybe sometimes where you may take two three years and then you may start getting the money so right now the question says that only to be received for 5 years that means i am going to get the money for 5 years okay but this money will start coming in from year end of year 3 end of year 3 is this because all the cash flows are from the start of the year at the end of the year okay now how will i discount it discount factor is uh, how much 10% okay can you give me the discount factors from the present value table behind Four eight Guys, six eight. Give the... Four eight six eight for all seven years. No, it cannot be four eight six eight. Okay, sorry, I'm giving you the annuity factor. Guys, we are we we are not going to use annuity because guys, this table approach is for your present value thing. Okay, as the present value approach, not the annuity approach. Annuity approach, I'll show you below how to do it. Okay, what is the discount factor for th third year at ten percent? Point seven five one. One seven five one for third year. Yes, sir. Okay, then for fourth year. Say three point six eight three. Three point. Zero point six eight three. Six eight three then. Point six two one. Point six two one then. Point five six four. Point five six four. Then point five one three. Okay, everyone with me till here. So, what is the net present value of God as three one three two? Everyone with me? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay. Now I have a shortcut formula for this. I will just show it to you. How do you do this? Okay. Now, guys, this thing is very important. You can mark this part as very important. As okay, uh, present value for. 
I have just broken down into the simple formula. Okay, it is cash flow multiplied by annuity factor multiplied by discount factor that is uh, one year before the start. Okay, now what is my cash flow? Thousand. Okay, multiplied by what is my annuity factor for five years? Because see, guys, remember annuity factor ka jo table piche diya hai. When I mean the table given behind, I mean this table. It says number of repetitions. That means how many times is my cash flow gonna get repeated? What is the number of times my this cash flow is gonna get repeated? Five, 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 right? Times. Because see, if it repeat five years, then I discount karna hai, right? Five times. Okay, what is that? 3.751? Is that the number? 791. Sorry. 3.791. Okay. Now guys, what happens is, I have discounted this five years, right? Because I have discounted only five times, right? Only five repetitions I've taken. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So that means if I discount it five times, then I will come to year two, right? Yes or no? Yes. Sir. But I my today is what? Today is year zero. I need to come to year zero, right? Because when we are trying to make a decision, it is today. Clear everyone? Right. Yeah. Right. Now, how will I come to that? Now, when is my cash flow starting? Year three? Mm -hmm. Which is the one year before year three? Two. Year two. Year two. Let's go to the present value table of year two at 10%. What is the present discount factor? 0.826. Did I get the same answer? Did I get the same answer, guys? Yes. It's just rounding off thing, guys. Uh, you guys in the exam, this rounding off is absolutely fine. Okay. Yeah. I got the same answer. So this is where we use the thing. In future, while solving the sums and all, we're going to use this approach the majority of the times because in complex calculation, I do not want to do a further additional working of this whole table. Right? See, present value and annuity factor, okay? These two things are nothing. They are both the things are same. The only difference is annuity factor saves time when you have a recurring cash flow. Instead mm. of using the present value approach and all, but if you guys feel confused in the exam or if you are lost somewhere in the exam, you do this present value approach, you'll get your full marks. You're not going to lose a single mark for it. Okay. Because annuity factor is nothing but just simplifying your workload. It's not a new concept or something, right? It's just simplifying your workload. Clear everyone? Yes, sir. Uh, will we be getting this all present value yes. and annuity factors? Okay. Yes, yes. So, guys, uh, in the exam, the sheet from here, can you see this formula sheet at the end of the notes? Yes, sir. Now, from there, this formula sheet, two-page formula sheet, your present value tables, your annuity tables, and the standard deviation tables will be given to you in the exam. Okay. But see, even uh, let's say sometimes uh, it's never been a case, but worst case, let's say if you do, if you don't get a chance to look at that table, you can stu still do the calculation, right? Using this approach. One divided by one plus R, right? Guys, discount factor given behind is nothing but this thing. I'll just show you.
it's nothing can you but see 751 guys can you see this number yes sir. Yeah. yes no yes. 0.751 so one divided by one plus r raised to n is nothing but the same thing. If, even if you go to the this table over over here above, you will see the formula is one divided by one plus r raised to n is what that they have given. Clear? Any doubts till here, guys? Is everyone with me till here, or do you guys have any doubts? No. Yes, no. Can you speak up, please? No, no, sir. No. No, no. The next one is the perpetuity. What do you think this perpetuity is all about? When there is because no definite is, period over which you expect cash flow. Right. Uh, let's say uh, when you start a business, do you know when uh, when is that business going to stop? No. No, right. The business is going to continue in the foreseeable future, right? As in, As long as it makes money. Now, then in that case, it becomes difficult difficult for me to analyze right the valuation of the company or what is the future potential it's making because the <coughs> because the company is gonna make money in the foreseeable future and it is gonna make continuously so in that case we use perpetuity perpetuity is nothing but kind of an infinity that means the company is gonna make money every year okay now if the cash flows are coming in perpetuity the formula for that is nothing but cash flows divided by R. R is nothing but your discount rate. Okay. But the problem with uh, perpetuity is when your business is growing in infinity, your all the years ka cash flow is not going to be the same, right? Your business is also simultaneously going to increase. Yes or no? Guys, yes or no, your business is going to increase or all the cash. Let's say the flip card, it's been 15 years. It's a perpetuity business. Uh, will the cash flows remain same or will it increase for them? Increase. Increase. Increase for them, right? So whenever there's a perpetuity with growth, the formula is cash flows multiplied by 1 plus growth divided by R minus G. Clear, everyone? Yes. Uh, everyone with yeah, but there is also yeah. a problem that the growth rate is also not a stagnant one, right? It differs from year to year. That differs from year to year, Sai. Right? That's an assumption. Okay. So that assumption, when you solve the questions, the question will tell you the scenario. What is the growth to be taken? What is not to be the taken? But in the real life, this is kind of an unrealistic picture. Since you are doing a future forecast, what typically happens is growth uh when we do this financial modeling okay mm -hmm. we always mention the caveat that the growth is assumed to be stagnant whereas in the real life the growth is not stagnant the growth will differ from year to year yeah so all these caveats are mentioned before making any financial decisions so is this model like really being used in the uh, practical lives or it is just a theoretical model no, it is it is it is actually being used in fact, I myself have used a lot of projects. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I'll just give also once we, uh, so guys, typically what happens is NPV analysis may one or two assumptions are right. See, you are kind of doing a prediction. You need not be 100% accurate, but you need to be 80 to 90% accurate. Got it? Guys, everyone with me till now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you solve this part?
as when you're solving it on Excel, be careful with the brackets. Yeah. Anyone who got the answer? Sorry? 12,750. Okay, can you give me the breakup? Yeah, 1000 into uh, 1 plus 0 0.02. Divided by uh, zero point one minus uh, zero point zero two. This is what everyone got. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> second one is the delayed perpetuity. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Cash flows to be received thousand in perpetuity setting from end of year five. What does this mean? Uh, that this twelve seven fifty perpetuity we received is at the end of year five, so we need to discount it to the present value by discount factor of uh, year end five. Right. <coughs> so this. Multiply by what is the one year before ka discount factor, guys? The present value. Guys, what is the present value for one year before? 0 0.683. 0 0.683. See, guys, I am gonna get my money from this year, the fifth year. Fifth year se perpetuity ka discount maine kar di hai. That means I have come to year four. So from year four, say I need to come to year zero, right? So remember this formula. Multiply it by the present value factor of one year before the start. It is starting at the end of fifth year. One year before is year four. So what is the present value factor for year four? Zero point, I heard someone saying it. How much is it? 683. 0.683. I will not get my answer right. Or I... Okay, this is what my final answer is. Clear everyone? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any doubts still here? Guys, any doubts? No. No, sir. Okay. So guys, this uh, delayed annuity and delayed perpetuity will all come lot in handy when you're doing your business valuations and all those things. Uh, or this will all come in uh, handy when you do it. Okay, so just keep this basics in mind. Now, we also need to incorporate inflation in our investment appraisal okay when i mean inflation i typically we need to understand uh, because see if i'm doing a project analysis for five years or six years right the cost of materials are not going to be the same right we all know the uh, as the inflation goes up the cost of raw materials will also go up right yes or no yes sir. yes sir. right now, how do we incorporate inf inflation in investment appraisal? There are two ways to do it. One is known as real method and one is known as money method. Okay. Real method mein kya hoga? Do not inflate any of the cash flows. So I'll just give you an example. Let's say you have revenue, you have cost, you have... You have fixed cost, you have your gross, you have your, uh, you have your uh, free cash flow. I'm just giving you an example, okay? Let's say this is 10, this is 5, this is 3. This is your this, okay? In real method,
because I'm just giving an example. What I'll do is, I'll let's say my inflation is ten percent. So I'll just do this into one plus ten percent. I got two point two. Everyone understood this real method? Yes, guys. Everyone. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Then we have the money method. Okay. Money method में क्या होगा? I'll do this into one plus ten percent. Then this, then this, then this, and I'll come to two point two. Everyone understood? Now, can you tell me the difference between money method and real method? Money method is for individual line item, and real method is when you discount at the overall thing. Now, this is the basic one. Now, let's come to the technical one. See, money methods are typically used because let's say, uh. your uh, inflation may not be linear for all the materials when i say linear that means your fixed cost will go up by 5% but your revenue will go up by only 2% so there are different inflation rates for different kinds of materials right because see inflation is is driven by, by basically the demand and supply that we have okay now What will happen is real method. Me in the exam, when the different inflation rates are given to you, use we will use the money method. That means, if the question says your cost is going up by X percent, your uh, revenue is going up by because see, real method can be used when there is general inflation given, right? One inflation rate to be given. That time we can use the real method. But money method is where we where a uh, specific intra inflation rates are given to you. We'll use the money method only use money method where it is practical sensible for example when the cash flow occur for a longer period of 30 years it becomes tedious to because see guys ye to maine ek saal ka kiya hai like this if i have to do for uh, 30 years that will be how much do you think my accuracy will be constant in all the years no right Each and every cash flow to be inflated based on previous year becomes very hectic. So that time it makes practically sense to use the real method as the inflation thing. Okay, clear everyone. Yeah. Uh, from exam standpoint, you will hardly come across one or two questions where you'll have to use the real method. But that is also not for thirty years. Okay, it will be again for four five years. But the question will specifically mention you to use the real method. Otherwise, uh, it's not required. Ninety-nine percent of the times, you'll we'll always be using the money method because that's more complex and uh, from exam standpoint. Clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now the relationship between the money cost of capital and real cost of capital. There is a Fisher's formula. Okay. Because see, sometimes what will happen is uh, when you are using the money cost of capital uh, money method. You discount your gross margins and all, but again your discount factor has to be your money cost of capital, right? इसके बाद मेरा क्या आता है discount factor. Now discount factor has the interest rate component. So this for real I'll have to use the real one, and this I'll have to use the money one. Okay. Now what the examiner will do is he will give you individual inflation rate. But he will give you the discount factor का inflation rate in real terms. That time we can use this Fisher's formula to calculate it, calculate the money. Because see, if I'm using this method, I need the money discount factor, right? Everyone understood? How do we do it? It is one plus I is equal to one plus R multiplied by one plus H. A simple way to remember is one plus money is equal to One plus R, that is real, multiplied by one plus H, that is your normal inflation rate. Clear, everyone? Yeah. Is everyone with me till here? Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. 
Now tax and all I'll come later on. First, I want to run pass through this form. And I'll just make a little small for now. In the past, you may have done uh, various ways in which you have done your NPVs, you have done your uh, calculations, your investment appraisals and all, okay. But guys, mark this format as very important, okay. Any question in the whole exam kit or anything in the uh, exam that comes, just stick to this format and you will get all your answers. I'm telling you, if you just stick to this format without even, let's say if you're lost in the logics and all, you can still get your answers 100% right, okay. Now this, uh, and throughout the class we'll be using this, so you'll understand. Now guys, this format is nothing but typically an NPV format. Okay, what do I mean by that is, now let's say if I have to make, a, if I have to evaluate my project or a business, which is for five years, this is the format I'm gonna use. Year zero is always gonna be my year of investment. Then I have end of year one cash flow, end of year two, end of year three, and end of year four. We can extend it for the number of years we want. Okay, first line as usual comes with my operating revenues. Now keep in mind guys, we will always be using only the relevant cash flows for this, okay? Then comes my operating cost. Then comes my net profit. Then comes my tax. Guys, next to tax, can you please write a uh, working one? You know, whenever you do a main report, you always give a reference to the working, right? Yes or no? Yes. Right? So just next to tax, write working one. I'll tell you why. Because tax requires a separate working. Okay. Then comes your initial investment. Then is your scrap. Okay. Why, why do you think I've put the scrap in year three over here? Guys, just hold on for a second. I'll be back just hold on. Can, can you tell me why is the scrap written in year three? Because our it's written illustration is for three years mm -hmm. life project. So after three years, right. it goes after. Because I can only scrap my capital assets once my project is complete, right? I'm not going to sell my laptop unless and until my work is done. Once my work is done, I'm going to sell it, right? That's when the year when I receive the scrap. Then comes working capital. Next to working capital, I also want you to write working note too. Even for working capital, we are always going to refer to a note. Clear everyone till here? Guys, any doubts? No, sir. Okay. The next comes the free cash flows. Then is our discount factor, then is a present value, and the sum of present value is nothing but your NPV. Clear? Yes, sir. Guys, yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And let's say whenever you have an annuity thing, what we'll do? We have year zero of investment. Year one to year three, my cash flow is going to remain constant. Yes or no? Three yeah. years ka projected to three years the cash flow is gonna remain constant and yes. we do the calculation. Okay. Now, why did I ask you to write tax as a separate working? Is this see depreciation is a non-cash item. If I have to explain you, let's say my profit, let's say my net profit is hundred. This is free cash flow ka approach. Okay. Ideally, I will pay, let's say the tax rate is 30%. Ideally, I'll have to pay tax on this 100. Yes or no? 
गाइस यस ऑन हो यस सर यस सर ओके बट कीप वन थिंग इन माइंड एज पर इनकम टैक्स वी कैलकुलेट एज पर यू नो एज पर इनकम टैक्स वी हैव अ डिफरेंट पीएनएल डू यू गाइस एग्री टू दैट व्हेन यू हैव स्टडीड एफ6 यस सर यस राइट बिकॉज़ इनकम टैक्स में वी गेट अ बेनिफिट फॉर डिप्रिसिएशन now let's say i have 100 rupees my depreciation is 20 rupees though it's a non cash item but what it will do is it will reduce my impact and let's say now my tax is 30% so can you see this my tax liability has come down from uh, 30 to 24 understood this now yes. so so what it has done is it has typically brought down my net profit okay that's why we do a separate working and we consider depreciation only in the tax working in the main pro forma i will know where use the depreciation working and i don't want you to get confused given to you by the at the end of the exam kitten now i'll show you also how they have done but for now forget everything this is the format that we going to use okay now that's why we do the separate working for the tax how we do we have operating cash flows we have tax allowable depreciation depreciation is there yes or no we have taxable profit and then we have tax to be paid clear everyone yes sir okay now for discount factor you know sometimes the question will give you discount factor pre tax and post tax okay one thing in mind discount factor that we going to use is always going to be after tax if it is given before tax you will reduce the tax from it clear everyone yes sir yes no yes sir yes sir टैक्स क्या होगा ना टैक्स तो मैंने लाइब्रेरी कैलकुल बट समाइम्स इट मे बी पेबल इन एडवांस इन सेम ईयर एंड अरियर ओके वॉट डू आई मीन बाय दैट यू नो यहाँ पे टैक्स में ईयर फोर दिया है ओके ना दिस क्वेश्चन वॉट अज्यूम इन अरियर्स वॉट डू मीन बाई अरियर्स अरियर्स मीन्स यूल पे वन ईयर लेटर राइट एवरी वन नोज दैट अरियर्स दैट मीन्स ईयर वन की टैक्स लाइबिलिटी यू विल पे इन ईयर टू year 2 ki liability you will pay in year 3 and year 3 ki will paid in year 4 now guys remember tax has the highest amount of uh, marks in the whole working okay so be careful because this is one place where examiner likes to complicate things okay now let's say the question says the tax is paid in same year it will be year 1 ka year 1 year 2 ka year 2 year 3 ka year 3 and year 4 ka year 4 mein clear everyone yeah okay So I have just a doubt in the um, yeah. pre and post tax. I'm struggling to understand with the application. Part. Uh, don't worry, application part I'll help you understand. Now let's say your discount factor pre tax is coming to guys. The numbers that I'm telling right now will be all solving with an example, but I'll just give you now. Let's say tax rate is thirty percent. So there will be ten minus thirty, which is seventy, right? No. This is tax rate. This is your discount factor rate. So post tax it will be ten into one minus thirty percent. So right. it will be seven percent. Okay. Okay. So it is thirty percent of ten percent. I've got it now. I just yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I got it. Now, guys, the next one is the working capital. Now, keep in mind, working capital is not a relevant cash flow for you. Incremental working capital is relevant for you. Okay, why I'm telling you that is now. Let's say you already have a factory manufacturing speakers, and you are trying to you are starting to manufacture socks. Okay, let's say sneakers and socks. Uh, for sneakers, your working capital was hundred rupees. But when the sneakers came in, your working cap uh, uh, socks came in. Your working capital is one fifty, right? Now, when my working capital is one fifty, typically that the whole one fifty is not my relevant working capital. Why? 
because I am trying to evaluate for my socks company. How much is the money my socks company gonna make? Clear, everyone? So only the working capital attributable to the socks part is what is relevant to me. Now, is working capital an income or expense? Expense. Okay, Arjan says it's expense. Anyone with a difference of opinion? Devansh, Bianca, Rachel, Ananya. It might be new. Come on, guys. It can be right or wrong. You just need to convince the examiner. It's all about it. Yes. Uh, expense in uh, starting years and then we'll recover. Like, at it the... might be neither because like, it's like an investment, right? Like You put it. And right. After a couple of years, I you got so guys, working capital is not an income nor an expense. Working capital is ju just mere blocking of money. Your cash flow is getting blocked. Okay. Now, why we take working capital into consideration is because once my money gets blocked, let's say it is my money and I have given it to you. That means, and if I'm not getting any interest, that means I'm losing on my interest part. If you loan a money to a friend, you don't get interest on it, right? That means that's it. That's a loss for you. Yes or no? Yes, sir. <clears throat> so that's all we need to think about it. <coughs> now, guys, working capital, what happens is it will working capital requirement is always at the start of the year. Everyone agrees to this? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Working cap. Sorry. Working capital is always needed at the start of the year because once I invest my money, I'll be able to buy raw materials, then I'll process it, and then I'll sell it in the market. That's how my whole cycle works. Okay. So working capital will what happen if let's say if it is at the start of year one, but the columns that we use we represented it as at end of year, right? So what we do is we represent it in year zero. End of year zero means opening of year one. Yes. Yes or no, guys? Right? Yeah. So we represented that. So working capital will what will happen is the reason we do a working capital adjustment separately because the questions become tricky. Sometimes it says the working capital is needed 10% of sales, sometimes it will say 30% of sales, sometimes it may say incremental, and all those things. Okay. Now in this case, it's a working capital is 10% of sales. That means year zero, I need, uh, so year, uh, it is 10% of sales. That means first year, I need 30, 40, and 50. Okay. But look at this very carefully. First year ka sale 30, hai, toh, that means first year, I have to put 30. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now remember, working capital is just blockage of money. That means till the time the customer pays you back. At the end of the year, you get your working capital back. Typically. Okay. Next year, ka sale kitna hai? 40. Yes. Everyone yeah. with me, Dilea? Yes. But out of this 40, how many have you already invested? 30. So what is the additional that you need to put in? Okay. Same. Similarly, come to year 3, you need 50. Already invested 40, you will invest additional 10. And in the last year, when your business shuts down, typically, right, when your project ends or let's say you're making a real estate building, once your projects are completed, you get the money, all the money from the customer and you give it to them, right? So typically year three, may you'll have all your working capital coming back to you. Clear everyone over here? Any doubts? No. Are you sure everyone is clear on this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.